You want to know how to make a super hot fire? Lithium ion batteries. They burn at over 3000 degrees. And I'm going to put 2000 of them in my little van. You know, I can almost guarantee that you have more lithium ion batteries in your house than any other kind of battery. Lithium ion batteries are great at storing energy. They're also really good at charging and discharging energy. That's why they're so common. They're used in things like iPhones, Teslas, and even my Toyota Prius. So you're probably wondering, are these batteries safe? Yeah, they're safe. They're safe. They're safe. You may have heard horror stories about exploding e-bikes or hoverboards, and those stories are really scary, but I'm gonna explain why most of those happen. But first we need to talk about something else. So let's say these two glasses represent two batteries inside of my battery pack. And the liquid inside of them is gonna represent how much charge each one of these batteries has. Then this pitcher is gonna represent the charger. The charger is set to a specific voltage for this battery pack. And it's gonna apply the same amount of power across all of the cells in the battery pack to charge them up until they reach that set voltage. Watch what happens when we charge the battery pack. The cell that has a higher charge is gonna get full a lot quicker than the undercharged cell. And now it is going to be overcharged and this could potentially cause a fire. We don't like fires and we do not want a fire. So what do we do to stop that? A battery management system is a device that's able to monitor individual cells within a larger battery pack and make sure that each cell within that pack stays within a safe range of one another. They do this by moving voltage from the highest charge cells in the pack to the lowest charge cell of the pack until the pack is balanced. But most battery management systems are only intended to be used with battery packs that are already well designed and balanced. When you hear about these electric scooters, skateboard, e-bike, whatever they might be, fires, most of the time what happens is either one or many of the cells within the pack are mismanaged, faulty, and often overcharged. And this is what causes a fire, like what we saw in our example. So it's important that you make sure your entire pack is balanced before you put it all together, because the BMS is only gonna help it keep balanced. It's not gonna actually balance big gaps for you. So if your batteries are out of balance, which does happen, how are you actually gonna go about balancing them? Okay, so a little update. Um, I've got all the batteries wired up uh, and tested with the BMS hooked up. Uh, what I found was that out of the five pack of batteries, the five batteries, five modules that I've got wired in series for my whole 120 volt pack, one of them is at a lower voltage or lower state of charge than the rest. First thing that I need to do before putting the modules underneath the van is balance them all out. What are you supposed to do? Well, typically, uh, if you wire batteries in parallel, the voltage will actually flow and balance out naturally across all of the different modules. But if there's a big difference between the higher charged battery and the lower charged battery, there'll be a huge inrush of current from the higher charged battery to the lower charged battery. And so that current can obviously be really damaging to the battery and the connections that you have between them. So there's a way to reduce the current. Making sure that you have the right amount of current for whatever you're using is crucial. And what you can use to regulate current is one of these. What I'm holding here is a resistor. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about resistors, but basically a resistor does what the name suggests, and it resists current between two power sources. To determine the size of the resistor, you use something called Ohm's law, which is actually really simple. It's voltage equals current times resistance. Using this formula, you can plug in the voltage difference between the two batteries as the voltage. You can choose the desired current that you need, and then all you do is solve for R. Then, whatever resistor you get, you put in line between your two batteries in a parallel connection, and voila. But, there's another way you can do this. This right here. This is a RC car battery charger and discharger and balancer. This can balance a, a bunch of different types of batteries, but what we're interested in is the lithium, uh, which is what the Tesla modules are, and it can do batteries one, two, you can see right here, 
to 6s, which just means 6 um, in series, which is what a Tesla module is. And it goes up to 22.8 volts, which is like 3.7 volts per cell module. So this is exactly what we need. Um, so essentially what we do is we take our cell tap leads off of the Stealth EV boards and we're going to hook it up to this charger like that. And then um, this is the output. So we just gotta put some alligator clips on these. Um, and this will go to the battery terminals and we can set it to charge the battery up to 3.7 volts per, per cell module. Like I mentioned, I needed to get one module up to the 3.7 volts the rest of the pack was at. So I cut up the battery balance harness from the RC charger and hooked it up to the spare BMS harness I had. Then I was able to hook up the charger and start charging and balancing using this little RC charger. Now that I got the batteries within two hundredths of a volt away from each other, it was time to move on to charging. But first, I want to give a little bit more detail about how the battery packs and BMS are wired for anyone curious. Here is a schematic of the system. On the right, you can see the BMS controller and satellite. These are connected to each other through this data link connection. They can each monitor two groups of cells with 12 cells in each group. To the left of that, we have our actual battery boxes. Box number one and two each have two Tesla modules in them, and box number three just has one. Within the first two boxes, these modules are connected in series using an insulated copper bus bar from the positive terminal of one to the negative terminal of the other. Then those two boxes are connected in series using 2 watt 70 millimeter high voltage wire with the negative box of number one wired to the positive box of number two. And finally, box number two is wired in series to box number three, negative to positive, using that same wire. Then there's the actual BMS wiring. The BMS controller monitors the cells in box one and two, and the satellite monitors the remaining cells in box three. That's it as far as wiring the battery pack goes. So now it's on to charging. Before I actually go to hook everything up, I've had this battery sitting for a while and I just wanna make sure, well, now that I've got it charged back up, I want to be sure that there's not some weird parasitic loss happening with this battery and that we're still in good shape. So I've got cool turn back open. Um, this is all hooked up. We're gonna turn it on. There we go. See LTC1 is connected. I can type the command show cells. And we've got the same readings that we did from, I don't know, probably six hours ago or so. So I think, uh, I think we're good to go. Now is also a good time to mention again how I'm obviously not a trained professional. I wouldn't advise anyone to handle high voltage components like this. Do as I say, not as I do, and wear insulated gloves and use insulated tools. You can't just use any charger to charge your batteries. You need one specifically designed to match the voltage range of your pack. For this configuration, I'm using a 3.3 kilowatt charger from Thunderstruck. It's configured to charge this 120 volt pack, albeit really slowly, but safely. It can't work on its own though. It needs a controller. So I'm pairing it with the EV charger controller, also from Thunderstruck, that I'm able to program and it works in tandem with the BMS. If you want me to go into more detail about the charger and the EVCC wiring, let me know in the comments. Hey everybody. So this is a big moment. This is our first time plugging in the charger. Um, and let me kind of walk through what I've got set up. So we've got our two battery boxes their BMS connections connected, box one and box two, uh, fifth module there. We've got our 12 volt power supply. This is our BMS satellite, BMS controller. Um, these are not gonna have power right now because I'm just testing the EVCC, which is just outside of the frame. 
you can see right here, this is the BMS controller connector with power and ground and then CAN bus high-low. Um, so there's, can, there's a CAN bus connection running from the EVCC to the controller right now. I've got the um, resistors enabled on the controller and on the EVCC because uh, those are going to be the two ends of this loop. It's not a big CAN bus loop. So you basically want resistors on either end. Um, so for now, I'm just going to power on the EVCC with the charger. So the EVCC is essentially both ends of that loop. So it's fine that the resistor is there, I believe. So now I'm going to uh, plug in the J1772 for the first time, power up the EVCC. Um, so that's what we're going to do right now. Nothing is actually hooked up to the, nothing that will be getting power is actually hooked up to the batteries. I just want to be careful and not put anything into the batteries before I need to power up the EVCC, either by auto starting or applying 12 volts. So there we go. Okay, so now we're gonna connect. Handle BS and Dell characters. And connect. And it is saying proximity EVSE not connected. So something is not right there. Something was in fact not right. So, some updates. We got updates. Um, I have discovered that there is some wiring that is actually not in the schematic of uh, the Thunderstruck manual or schematic, which is typically wouldn't be an issue um, if you're installing this directly onto your car. But if you are testing it like this, then it is an issue. The issue is you need to have case of the charger needs to be connected to the same ground that the EVCC circuit is on. So we're gonna wire everything back up and we're gonna try one more time and hopefully get this right. Oh, okay, this time this is EVSC connected, waiting to be unplugged. Okay, well I'm not seeing anything, I don't know what the issue is now. Power down. I wonder if there's something going on with the CAN network. I'm gonna unplug 1772, and we're gonna plug back in our BMS. So now we've got our full CAN loop connected. I'm gonna turn back on the EVCC. There we go. Okay, so we're getting some CAN messages coming through. That is promising. Let's see if we get some from the charger. Plugging in the 1772. Bingo, baby. Click. Bingo. Okay. And the light is on. So that's what it is. You gotta make sure your CAN loop is connected properly and the resistors are running. I would call that a success. Now that I had sort of figured out the charger, it was time to actually wire it up for the first time. First step was putting together these high voltage connectors. There's no instructions for them. I got them from Zero EV because I figured the, the 90 degree would be easier um, than just the straight connectors. So we're gonna learn together how to do these. So they have these little cartridges that hold the terminal in place, and here are the little aluminum terminals. First, I measured out how much of the wire I needed to strip, and then how much I actually needed of bare wire, and then just the outer shield stripped. And then I made a mark, and I cut off the outer shielding. Then I slid over the ceiling rubber gasket and the little piece of plastic that locks it in place. 
then I could crimp on the terminal with my hydraulic crimpers. Then I would strongly advise you test every one of these high voltage crimps every time you do them. Then I could assemble these little cartridges and just snap together like little Legos and then you slide them in. And then these two little retainers are almost like little puzzle pieces. So they go together first and then you click them both over the whole assembly and that's it. Figuring out just the battery wiring, the BMS and the charger took a ton of time, just like this video. So if you're liking what I've been putting out so far, please like this video, comment and subscribe. It helps so much. Now that I have those connectors put together, I was going to attempt another charge. And as I was setting things up, I noticed that once again, something with the charger wasn't quite right. So here is our full pack wired up, ready to go. Now, all we have to do is give it power, plug in our J1772 into the van over there, and we're gonna give it a go. So, I'm gonna turn on 12 volts, boom. Got 12 volts on. I'm going to hit my ignition switch. You can see charge controller came on. BMS is balancing and that is waiting for something. So to diagnose our charger that's not working, we've got trace charger on. We're also going to trace can. And now we're seeing the actual can data coming in from the BMS. I've got my charger and we are going to plug it in if I can manage. There we go, here the charger clicking on, the fan comes on. And what our issue is, we're getting an error light and we want to see if we get the same one again. And we get this red, green, yellow, yellow. And that error code from what I've looked up is not to be confused with red, green, yellow, 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 which means that you have faulty input wiring or something like that. From what I understand, something wrong with the charger. So Thunderstruck asked me to give it another go with the can tracing on. Now that we've got that all recorded, I'm gonna send that over to them and they're going to help me diagnose the issue. Very exciting to get all this work done and not have the charger work, but we'll get it figured out.